The news out of the southern, southern border is that our system is being overwhelmed. It's collapsing because of the numbers of illegal aliens coming to the border and seeking asylum and other, um, and frankly, other ways to get in uh, without having to follow the law. Obviously, if you seek asylum, that is a lawful process, uh, but the numbers are overwhelming. We are running out of space as, allocated, as allocated thus far. So our reporting is, and uh, the complaints we're hearing from the that area is that the people are being released by the hundreds and the thousands. Uh, the numbers are extraordinary. If the rate continues um, as it is now, we will have admitted illegal aliens to the tune of 1.35 million this year. So we're at a record pace for illegal aliens invading our country. Uh, now, who's at fault here? Uh, We've got the establishment that refuses to secure the border. That's pretty clear. You saw that in the fight with the president's national emergency, uh, where you had some Republicans and even some Democrats try to uh, over, overturn his uh, declaration, a narrow declaration of a national emergency on the border. I tell you, a national emergency is probably not strong enough a word. I know that's a legal term, uh, but it's a national crisis on the border. We have an open border. Uh, we are unable to control it. Uh, the numbers are a crisis and something urgent needs to be done uh, beyond, uh, frankly, even building a wall. Uh, because a wall is never going to be built in time. It may be necessary, but it is not sufficient at this time to uh, secure the border as it needs to be secured. What I'd recommend that the pre now the president is recognizing this. As I've said before, the president is the first president in a generation you know, frankly, in the last 30, 40, 50 years to talk honestly about the crisis on the border. And uh, even as we, uh, I think even today, uh, the president was threatening to close all or part of the border if the Mexican government didn't do its part uh, to make sure that we weren't continued to be overrun uh, by illegal aliens, caravans and otherwise. Uh, coming up from Mexico. I think one of the things you need to understand is that we don't control our border anymore. The cartels do on both sides. Now we may be in places, our, 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 our border patrol, our uh, immigration customs enforcement, our justice department, you know, we will have places where we are uh, securing the border, uh, allowing people in, processing them, which means essentially just keeping them uh, detained for a few days before they're released and never show up again. Uh, but that's not controlling the border. And certainly much of the other border is uncontrolled and unsecure. And all that, all that traffic, all that human trafficking, trafficking is generated by the cartels. So we don't control our side of the border. And, we, and the Mexican government similarly does not control its side of the border. So what's the solution? Well, you know, the immediate solution is, uh, I would suggest the following. Uh, just have the military, my, one of my colleagues uh, highlighted this possibility and others have highlighted it as well, uh, triple concertina, uh, concertina wire, which is that kind of the rounded uh, barbed wire you see that sometimes provides uh, security. And triple uh, is you do it in, in stacks of three and it's almost impossible to climb over or get through uh, when you set it up that way. And that can be done uh, pretty darn quickly to secure the border. Uh, but I think a more uh, serious solution in the end is to have the military deploy the border, uh, de deployed to the border. The president should charge the military with securing the border. And, uh, and that doesn't mean just our side, it means securing the other side because the Mexican government does not control the other side of the border. So our military should deploy into Mexico as far as necessary to interdict individuals seeking to enter our country. That will solve the asylum issue because they will be trying to seek asylum in Mexico and they will not be uh, allowed entry into the United States. It will solve the security issue in terms of preventing our cartels from uh, coming up into the United States. And it will solve the law, rule of law issue because as of today, there are tens of thousands per month 
of illegal aliens coming into the country and living, living here illegally, undermining the rule of law. So it would protect the nation, secure the rule of law, protect our national security, protect the public safety and save lives. Now the president's talking about securing the border. I'm not quite sure what that entails, but it fits in nicely with deploying the military to secure the border. I mean, we've had this experiment, this long running, decades long experiment, where we've had civilian agencies secure the border and it isn't working. It's, it simply isn't working. And we have to, and, and the current crisis in, uh, is, is, a, is a recognition, you know, is a, uh, terrible demonstration that it's not working. You know, our military used to secure the border with Mexico, and they stopped doing that around the 50s. Well, they need to start doing it again. Thousands of special interest aliens, these are aliens with uh, uh, national security um, alerts tied to them, meaning that there's something about their activity that suggests terrorist ties. Thousands of special interest aliens are come across the border every year or run into by our agencies every year. Those are the ones we know about. So in addition to kind of the general problem of having large numbers of aliens illegally present in the United States and overrunning our border, we have the added national security component. Now what else is behind this? Talk of amnesty. Because I'm convinced, and this would be more of a policy statement, that when you talk about amnesty, you encourage people to cross the border. Because I know the solution is going to be out of Washington, D.C., on Capitol Hill. What Capitol Hill is going to say is, uh, because of the open borders crowd in both parties, that we need amnesty in order to secure the border. And they will pretend to uh, uh, support efforts to secure the border that will be half-baked, and probably will never be fully implemented while providing a massive amnesty to encourage, I think, more illegal immigration. And on top of that, we have this air of lawlessness, this massive lawlessness as a, as a result of this radical effort by the left at the local and state level to undermine immigration law by providing aid and comfort to illegal aliens, by protecting them from uh, being deported by refusing to cooperate, if not thwart, federal immigration law, placing the public at risk and encouraging more illegal aliens. So there's got to be a crackdown on sanctuary cities. And I'm proud of the fact that Judicial Watch has a major lawsuit, a taxpayer lawsuit against the San Francisco sanctuary policy that is now in discovery. We represent a taxpayer in California. Taxpayers can challenge the illegal expenditure of tax dollars. So if tax dollars are being used to promote an unlawful government policy, there's the possibility of going to sue in court and stopping that in state court. And to that end, we did something like that in San Francisco. We represent a taxpayer who is outraged at the uh, San Francisco sheriff's policy uh, that results in illegal aliens being released without ICE being informed, criminal illegal aliens. These are illegal aliens who have been jailed for other crimes but other than their criminal presence here in the United States. And we see story after story, not only in San Francisco, of that taking place and people dying, cops getting killed, uh, women getting raped, you name it people getting run over by drunk drivers, you name it. The carnage is real. And San Francisco's deadly and illegal alien, uh, deadly and illegal sanctuary policy is being uh, challenged by Judicial Watch in court right now, and we are, God willing, uh, set to go to trial in July of this year. So we're not waiting for a wall. Judicial Watch has never waited for Washington, D.C. to get its act together. And that's why we've been a national leader in highlighting the dangers of unbridled illegal immigration, the threat to the rule of law, trying to support the rule of law by challenging sanctuary city policies. I mean, back in the day, no one was focused on this, and I know it's still going on. Uh, Judicial Watch had challenges to day labor sites. Did you know that local governments, I'm sure 
probably your local government, is using tax dollars to support day labor sites where illegal aliens go to get illegal work? Yeah. Judicial Watch had challenged that successfully here locally in Washington, D.C. But these sanctuary policies are a menace to our, our ability to secure the borders. You can have a wall 100 foot high. But if there are giant welcome signs all over our, all over our major cities, it probably won't work in the long run. Like I said, it's necessary, but not sufficient. So I don't know what the president's going to do next week. I hope he doesn't back down. The crisis is not going to abate. You know, we think, uh, the people in Washington think illegal aliens don't know, or aren't, aren't sophisticated enough to follow our politics. They follow our politics pretty darn closely. And when they see politicians sniffing around amnesty, they come running because they want to get some. And when they see asylum laws being abused, and it pretty much and it becomes an easy way to get across the border, they're going to come get some of that too. And when they see a refusal of Congress to deploy the resources necessary to secure the border, they're going to take advantage of that as well. And the president has the constitutional authority, and dare I say it, the duty, to protect our border. And let me say something else. If the federal government doesn't do it, the states can get together and do it. The Constitution, and you can look it up, specifically allows the states to get together to defend themselves against a foreign invasion. And if that's not an invasion, I don't know what would be.